So how should you get started with your business? I don't mean how do you start your idea? I mean, how do you generate the time to start working on your new startup? And I strongly advocate a process of tapering across, taper across. Now, you would have heard from the numerous success stories coming out of places like Silicon Valley that um, people have gone all in, they've resigned their job, um, they've sold their house and they've spent it all on their business. However, the reality is that nine out of 10 startups are going to fail and it's not a smart move to go burning your career and uh, ruining your finances on a whim. There are much safer ways of doing it. So the way I recommend is to to wind down very gradually your current day-to-day paying job as you spin up your business and use the the revenue or the progress of your business as your measure of how much further to wind down your day job. So what I mean about this is I'll give you an example of what I did. So I was working as a full-time doctor in hospitals uh, for several years as a junior doctor when I decided to launch my startup uh, to fix the problem that I had seen, which was patients coming to harm and in some cases dying because information was getting lost in the system. So um, I needed a way of being able to work on this. Now, in the UK, when I was a junior doctor, um, medicine was a 48-hour contractual commitments but in reality you are often pressured to stay behind and do unpaid hours and I think every doctor and nurse who works in the NHS will attest to the number of unpaid overtime hours that get done um, because you mainly care about your patients so in reality I was spending probably about 55 hours a week in the hospital doing things um Then when you add on commuting time and just standard day-to-day living things like sleeping, eating, getting your laundry done, um, you can see how there's not much spare time in the week to get on with your side business. So my way of doing it was to, I I did actually resign from my full-time post, so it was to step away from the full-time 48 hours a week post and instead uh, become a contract contractor type doctor what we call a locum and what I would do is is I would work um, shifts in hospitals that were short uh, which is to be honest most of them and I would get paid for the hours that I actually worked but because I was a contractor my hourly rate was higher so uh, although I didn't have the security of a permanent job what I did have is a higher hourly pay and that meant I needed to work fewer hours a month to be able to earn my keep. So what I did is I went from doing a full-time job, 48 plus hours a week, and uh, stepped it back to working as a contractor where I'd probably do two to three shifts a week. Sometimes I bunched them together in a block. Um, And that kind of gave me a a third to two thirds of my time um, back to be able to pursue my business interest. so what happened is, is I would sign up for a block of shifts in, in emergency departments. Um, I would go off and I would work usually twilights or night shifts for two or three days in a run. I would come back and then I would have four or five days where I could work on my business. And then I would go off and do some more shifts again. And the take home monthly pay ended up being very similar because you've got a higher hourly rate. So that's how I did it. And then as the years rolled on and as my um, business got more successful, um, I was able to dial down the time that I devoted to doing clinical shifts and therefore dial up the time that I was spending on my business. So I went from full-time doctor working on things in the very few free days that I had, holidays, weekends, didn't really have evenings, to working on it for the minority of the week whilst working as a contractor um, to working half and half, contractor for half the week and working on my business for half the week and then eventually 
to the pattern that I am now. I still do do some clinical work, but that's more to keep my skills up. Where I work a minority of my time in the clinical world, and the majority is spent on my business. And the reason I recommend you do that is because you don't know if your business is going to succeed, but also you don't know how long it's going to be before your business can afford to pay you. It was six years from when I started my business to when I first paid myself a salary from the business. So for all that time, for those six years, I was dependent on that uh, minority of time or that, that, that contract to work um, for my entire income. I, the business, I wasn't taking a penny from my business. Now, most companies, things are a little bit faster and founders can pay themselves sooner. But you, the tr when you're starting out, when you're thinking, I want to jump ship, you really don't know how long it's going to be before you're going to be able to pay yourself a paycheck if, from your business. So, And that's why I say don't suddenly resign your job and go full-time on your business because you might find six months down the line your savings are, are, are wiped out and just you're still many months if not years off being able to pay yourself a salary and that's if your business doesn't go bust now i'm aware that not every job you've got the luxury of being able to dial down hours and as you dial up your business hours but if you look around creatively you can find ways of doing it many companies or many employers will entertain having somebody on part-time um, if it, if the alternative is losing them altogether. Now, you might not get be able to negotiate a higher hourly rate, but you, sh you might be able to negotiate, say, doing four days a week instead of five, which gives you one day a week to work on your business. And then what you can do is you can see with that one day a week, is my business becoming, building momentum? Might it be successful? Might I get to a point where I'll be able to pay myself? And in which case you can start thinking about negotiating again. So that's one option. A second option is to bank the experience you've got in whatever field you have and go looking for temporary work. Um, so that's kind of what I did. Um, one thing I would say is if you are keeping on a substantive employment, so if you're keeping an employment contract with somebody and perhaps dialing down your hours, just be really look really carefully at the clauses because you may find that some companies have clauses in certain areas of the world along the lines of you can't go off and do anything that competes with them. Um, and I've even seen more extreme clauses along the lines of you can't work on anything, even in your own time. Anything you do create is ours because we employ you. Now, those types of clauses I don't think are legal in the UK and the EU, but I'm not a lawyer. Um but there are jurisdictions where they are legal. So really you want to look very closely at your contract um, before you take the decision about whether you want to uh, convert your career into sort of a, a, a temping career where you try and get some contract to work, do a bit here and there, uh, or whether you stay on as an employee and renegotiate your hours so you're doing fewer hours. So the summary is I think you should taper across. And yes, it does mean in the early days you will have fewer hours per week to work on your business than if you had gone all in. But the important point is, is you don't know whether your business is going to succeed. Nine out of ten will fail and you want to be in a position where if you do fail, you can get back up on your feet really quickly and have another go at another, another type of business because that one may succeed. And the more goes you have, the sooner you'll find something that succeeds. Also, you may find that your business would be a success if only you had longer to spin it up without paying yourself. And it's very hard to survive that when you've got no income, but it's very easy to survive that if you've got another employment to fall back on, uh, even if some, you might even park your business for a month or two while you build up your um, war chest of savings a bit more. Um, perhaps you're waiting for conditions to change, let's say, um, or perhaps the, the business you've entered is highly uh, variant um, to, uh, with time of year. So being able to go back and dial, turn the dials the other way is really helpful because it means you keep running your business as a going entity whilst still having a line of income. So top tips are taper across, so find a way of making your employment um, 
contract take fewer hours and i really do like contract to work because if you paid more per hour it means you have to work fewer hours for the same income so taper across don't burn your bridges because you may need to dip back in to your permanent employment and the time at which you can cut away your original employment is when your business can reliably afford to pay you a salary